Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey here tonight. Last time, we started the final case of the original Ace Attorney. Well, original if you count the port to the DS, which added a bonus case. And I found the investigation to be pretty nice. I just missed the, the slide for investigation because that was only used once in the, uh, the Steel Samurai case, which is actually kind of amusing. It's a feature they use once, and then they brought it back for the bonus mission. But, uh, the testimony bit was a bit odd. Ever so slightly. Ever bitly. And I don't know why, it just felt... Uh, I, I don't know how to word it. It just felt odd. But I guess before we get into it properly, my mind is mean because it wants to play the Mass Effect trilogy again. It hasn't even been a year. Brain is just like, ah, Mass Effect! Weird brain. But we are going to continue, and we are going to see how the game goes from here. I did pick the right one, did I not? I think I did. February 23rd, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Um, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Are trials always like this with you? Like you're swimming up from the bottom of a lake about to reach the surface? But no matter how hard you paddle, you never seem to get there? Pretty much. Except today we're swimming in quicksand. So what happened to your sister anyway? Apparently she got called off to the judge's chambers. Hmm, probably something to do with that piece of cloth. So, this is where we turn this trial around, right? Our only weapon, a tiny, insignificant piece of cloth. I'm the one who's starting to feel tiny and insig insignificant, to tell you the truth. Hola, partner! Is it? Yep. <laughs> they say you show a red cloth to a bull, it'll fire up its temper. That's what they told me when I was a youngin' at least. Officer Marshall! Thought I'd come take a look-see at how the trial's going. Looks like I'm late. They've got the home ranch locked down tighter than a fort in an enemy territory. That hard to slip out, huh? What's going on over there anyway? All the police I've seen these last two days have been really on edge. Don't you got enough on your plate without worrying about other people, compadre? You could be worrying about the chief prosecutor's taste in mufflers, for example. Um, Officer Marshall, the whole muffler thing didn't have anything to do with scarves. She wasn't even wearing a scarf. You don't say. Now, don't that just beat it all? I've seen the red breeze blow at her slender neck many a time. I saw it that day, too. She was wearing a red muffler. What? At the awards ceremony that afternoon, Edgeworth seen it, too, I reckon. What does that mean? In the photograph taken at the crime scene, she wasn't wearing a scarf. So, Miss Starr wasn't mistaken? Well, it's about time. Remember, partner, sometimes you gotta grab the bull by the horns. And sometimes you just gotta let that bull go where it will. Time will tell. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. So, what are we swimming in now, Mr. Wright? If it stinks us, I can hook you up with some fine ribs. Woo-wee! Marshall is a weird character. February 23. 12, 32 p.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. Wait, what? What? Oh, I guess... Oh, we're not even gonna have an investigative section, it's just jumping right into the next court? I guess all they had to do was run down, find the... whatever was in the muffler, and come back, but... I thought that we'd put off till the second day like all the other ones, all the other cases, where... We go for a decent amount of time, we do the cross-examinations, and they're like, Huh, we are going to put it off until the next day. Uh, do investigations, you two. Ooh, eh, weird. I'd like to resume. What's up? The judge keeps looking over at the prosecution. Is something wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Your face is blue, your lips are purple, you're sweating bullets. 
That furrowed brow, those grindy teeth, those watery eyes. What's more, your eyes are unfocused. You're doubled over. Your back has been... Why is the judge just narrating? It can't be. This can't happen. I wonder what happened to Mr. Edgeworth. Well, then I believe it is time we continued on with this trial. During our recess, I had requested that the prosecution conduct an investigation. This is unacceptable! <laughs> hmm. It seems our prosecutor is quite beside himself. Uh, excuse me. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> what the hell? Who are you? Who are what? Yeah, what is with this guy? He looks weird. I think it's the smile. The smile looks weird. A strange stuffy aura seems to be filling the courtroom. What voice am I getting? Also, his eyes look weird. Hey, the temperature rose 5.7 degrees when that man came in. Who on earth is he? Ah, it's you. <laughs> Why is it just focused on him with it blinking? What is happening? <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Dodgy. The roads were packed, it's just me. Long time no see, Dodgy. How ya been? Swim much these days? Uh, hello, hello. No, oh, I've been so busy. Busy, busy, smizzy, Dodgy, my boy. You have to make time to relax. Y yes, indeed. Dodgy seems to be his nickname for the judge. I'm afraid you're right. Very afraid. Um, sorry, but who are you? Ha <laughs> ha, so you're right, oh, the worthy attorney. I've heard good things about you, son. Eh? Uh, thanks? So sorry about our little worthy getting you all the trouble, eh? You know, we should all go swimming together sometime, jolly! The little worthy? Mr. Wright! You don't know the district chief of police? Ch chief of police? He's the top ranking police officer in the entire district. Why does he look so creepy? Why does it focus on him just standing there blinking? Multiple times! Why? This is weird. Name's Gant, Damon Gant. Pleased to meet you, everyone. So, uh, what do we do? What, uh... uh I forgot the two at the beginning. The bleh. So, uh, to what do we owe this honor today? It's been over two years since you last came to this courtroom, hasn't it? Well, it's worthy here. Look at the poor fellow. It's just I thought I'd help out by bringing this. Hey, but that's... My sister's muffler. So Miss Star wasn't just seeing things. When the crime occurred, Miss Sky really was wearing that muffler. But to think that it was stuffed into that exhaust pipe. On Little Worthy's car, no less. Why is Edgeworth just so bent out of shit? Why is it just focus on you with silence so much? It's really quite embarrassing even for us. What's this? It's what you'd call a switchblade knife. Quite perplexing, this. So there's a second knife? <laughs> okay, this is wonky, this is weird. Not only because we're beginning with a trial segment for the second day. I think it's the second day. Bleh. Normally, after the to be continued, we go into investigation. Everything is weird. It is very odd that it just focuses on this man. Just standing there, blinking with his weird stretched smile. So apparently, there's a switchblade. That was, I assume, wrapped in the muffler uh, and then put into the muffler. But what does that mean? I think it might go along with my theory that the blood that was stepped in by Goodman the deceased victim of this case, had something to do with another murder, as uh, shown in the opening case video, where it showed two different people at the same time, well, presumably, who knows, cinema time can be weird, but yeah, two figures holding knives, attacking, and then 
Goodman went to the prosecutor's office three minutes after Edgeworth got there, seemingly broke into his trunk, and then Lana comes out, got a knife from Edgeworth's car, stabbed Goodman, and then presumably wrapped the other one in the muffler and put it in the muffler. This is all very confusing. Chief, what kind of outfit are you running? M Mr. Edgeworth, how could they miss such a vital piece of evidence? If your investigators are this lax, how do you expect us to do our job? <laughs> now wait a minute, Worthy. I've no desire to hear your excuses. I'm telling you to wait. Or oh, didn't you hear me? Have a look at this document where it says person in charge of investigation. There's no mistaking that signature, is there, Miles Edgeworth? That's not fair! On the day of the crime, I had... Your head in the clouds because you got that award. I know how you feel. But you're the person in charge. I'll expect a written apology. What? Are you serious? Don't be too upset. We'll find a way to clean this mess that you made. This is the first time I've seen Mr. Edgeworth at a loss for words. Hey, I saw it once before. <laughs> when he when he objected to try and find the words. And then objected again because he found the words. <clears throat> this kind of major blunder is unlike you, Mr. Edgeworth. Gag. The court accepts this new evidence. But I'd like to ask the defense a favor first. Yes? Just to be sure, I'd like to take a look at the blade of this knife. The, the blade, Your Honor? Well, I don't see why not. Could you open it up for me, I wonder? Yes, well, I think all, all you have to do is push the switch and... If I cut my finger, Mr. Wright, I wouldn't be able to pound my gavel anymore. I'm going to save because my brain is just burning. It even says day two, but we have, well, maybe, I don't know. Brain is brain is brain is brain. Yeah, but if I cut my finger, I won't be able to point at, at people anymore. I, okay, this part is funny to me. Come on, just hurry up and open it. It's a little weird. It has to go all the way. All the way. All right. There's a small tag on this knife. It seems to say SL92. What does that mean? Well, I've heard something similar. DL6, of the DL6 incident fame. But it's strange. Huh, what is it? I'm not certain, but I get the feeling I've seen this somewhere before. Like, letters like this, or letters that looked a lot like this, somehow. Hmm, and it seems like a smudge there, I wonder. Ah, don't scare me like that! I'm the one who's scared! Look at this knife blade. The tip is broken off. And this dark red stain. Blood? Switchblade knife added to the courtroom. Huh. Does it go along with the broken shield? Found at the crime scene wrapped in the defendant's muffler. Small tag attached. This does not excuse the actions of the police department. I would like to hear an explanation for the chief of police himself. I'm terribly sorry, but could I ask you to testify for us about the split between the prosecutors and the police and this knife? Sure, sure thing. Not a problem, not even a little one, really. Department in disorder. This knife is special, but I can't say how here. Unless there's evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any shape to do an investigation. A detective was killed at the police department scene. What a mess! The time of crime, 515. Scary coincidence, eh? It's not officially linked to uh, this case here case, so I can't talk much about it. Wait. 67S12-2. SL92. Hmm. 
Wish I could turn it over in 3D. But it's just, this is very tricky. There, there was a murder at the police department? A detective? That's hush hush information, Aji. We haven't exactly announced it yet. Objection. Wait a second. You said 515. That's the exact time that Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. All right, so if that time of murder is accurate, but again, they keep saying 515, but the autopsy is weird. Blech. But because the autopsy specifically says between 4 and like, yeah, between 4 and 530. So that's a bit odd. But, 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 but also, that might put a kibosh on my theory that the blood came from a different murder scene, but that. But it's still, I was correct on there being two murders. Granted, the opening cutscene gave that away. Order! 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 <laughs> anyway, we at the department, where are all the plus. Ah, excuse me. Well, anyway, we at the department, we're all a-flustered, as you might well assume. We're in the middle of a top, top secret investigation. Don't tell anyone, okay? I think we understand the police department situation. Well, Mr. Wright? Two detectives killed at the same time in di two different places. The chances of that are really slim, scientifically speaking, of course. I'd like to exercise my right to cross-examine the witness. Very well. However... Keep your questions focused on the case at hand. All right. But can't say how here. Hmm. I don't want to risk anything and he just said, keep it to the case at hand. He says this knife is special, but at the same time, I may have let's press and see. Maybe, because if we do press, we might learn if it has to do with, like, if it's evidence. Because that's probably it. Now let's press. Excuse me, special? <laughs> Hard to come by this particular knife anywhere else. Um, might that special thing be this little tag? Oh, sorry, Raito, but I can't say that now, not that. We've established that the knife in Goodman's chest was this knife. Now, why was this there another knife at the crime scene? That's quite a mystery. And like a mystery, it's wrapped in something. A muffler. Unless there's evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. That was... The writing here is a bit weird. This knife was found at the scene of our crime. I think that makes it connected to the case, don't you? See, there's a lot of things that go on at the department I can't explain. It's delicate, okay? Sorry, Raito. Maybe there's something about the knife that will give us a clue. Let's examine that knife while we can, Raito. Hmm, evidence that links this knife to Detective Goodman. SL92. I think perhaps the pieces are falling into place. I should try presenting the piece of evidence that's had me stumped all this time. So how are things down at the department? Well, let's press... Hmm. He did say keep it relevant to the case, but I want to press this. On the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? That's a fact! Surprising, isn't it, Aji? I'm at a loss for words. And the perpetrator, do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. Just arrested. That was quick. But there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Maybe you could help, Raito. I suppose I could help, if you help me by giving me data on your case. Oh, good one. This gets sharp. Okay, here's the deal. I'll tell you one thing and one thing only. We know that the victim was probably killed... No, wait, they can't be... Hmm. We know when the victim died, 515. The victim obviously was killed in the police department, right? How was the victim killed, I would say? 
Well, how was the detective killed? How he was killed? Now that's the interesting part. It was what we in the force call a stabbing with a knife. A knife? That's exactly the same as Detective Goodman. That's the spirit we're cooking now. But you know, that's not the only thing that was exactly the same. What do you mean? There were more similarities between the two cases than the cause of death. It seems like I'm going to have to press this a bit harder. Oh yeah, because then it led to the 515. 5... 515? But, but that's... That's when Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. What? Funny, isn't it? A murder at the prosecutor's place and a murder at our place at the very same time. What are the chances? This guy's way too cheery. Coincidence? This is just my gut feeling. But I'd say there's a 0.001% chance of that happening. Chief Gant, please tell us more about the incident. It's not officially linked to this case, so I can't talk much about it. Hmm. Name and ID number. 5842189. So the ID number doesn't seem to be important there. Hmm, 67S12. So the second, so either that's the 12th of February or the 2nd of December, I presume. Because, you know, nothing can be universal like dates. They say between this knife and Goodman, I would say the word muffler on with Lana's cell phone because due to the fact that Lana obviously knew about it, so she was like, hey, telling somebody about that. Let's see. Victim's memo. Could it be this would be what they need? But I don't think so. Well, let's press this just to make sure. How can you say there's no connection? How? Because I'm the chief of police. I can't just say anything I please, Raito. You understand? Try to understand, Raito. Well, if you can prove there's a connection, more power to you. Maybe there's something that ties the two murders together. Whatever it is, I'd better find it and get to the bottom of this. Two detectives were killed at 515, one at the prosecutor's office, and one at the police department. That can't be a coincidence. And that knife. What was it doing there? I'd better check this knife out. So yeah, maybe we can check it out. Yeah, maybe more information will become available now that we're in the midst of this. SL92. So it's obviously a murder. Yeah, there's a small gun. It says that. Yeah, DL6. So that makes it meant to be like, hey, this is related to crime. We can't look at the blood or the. Hmm, so there doesn't seem to be anything else about this. Then I want to present this. Objection! Wait a second. Ah, at last, an honest to goodness objection. This knife. This has to have something to do with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? <laughs> an honest to goodness, what do you mean, Bromaji? This is great. Look at the tag on this knife. It reads SL-92. And this is important, why? Over here, we also have... A memo that was... Oh! Is it upside down, maybe? Could be upside down, so it could be the S7-9 instead of 6-7-S. 
Hmm, what's this? 6 minus 7s, 12, 2? Oh no, it can't be upside down because then the date will be. Your Honor? Oh, it is upside down? Huh, well, shows I'm dumb. Upside. The printed name on the memo makes it look like it's right side up. But turn it around and what do you get? SL9. Oh, 2 2 21. Ah, aha! Whoever wrote this note was holding the paper upside down. SL9. That's the same thing that is written on the knife's tag. Order! Order! Well, Chief? Ah, well. My guess the cat's out of the bag. You win, Raito! I... win? Ah, what game is this guy playing? This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. So this knife was stolen? Yes, but on the day of the murder. It was evidence, you say. Was it, in fact, a murder weapon? Nice, nice, nice! Good show, little worthy! It was a murder weapon, as it happens. It was evidence from a case long since solved. So this knife was stolen on the day of the murder. And it was found in the exhaust pipe of Edgeworth's car. Hard to think there isn't a connection there. That was a bad day for the... Shape. Hmm. Well, now what? Because <laughs> we've already pressed him on everything else, but... It was evidence in a case it was stolen from the department's evidence room. So, this knife is from a case that's long since been solved. And it's not connected to the murder that happened over there. Well, let's maybe... Uh, did I press this? Something happened at the police department too, huh? You got a good look in your eyes there, right? Oh, my boy! Sharp! Hungry! So, something did happen. And why wasn't I informed? Why weren't you informed? Well, why didn't you ask? No matter, I understand. You were busy, what with Lana's case and all. Oh yeah, because the loudmouth guy, the, the, yeah, that man, he came in with the note. Well, what happened? What happened at the police department that day? Hmm. Because we already did that. He, it was a detective killed at 515 at the police department with a knife. Hmm. Hopefully they don't mind me doubling down. Or like... Like, uh, redoing it to get stuff back again. So there's an, a, a suspect who was arrested. Here's the deal. I'll tell you one thing, one thing only, even though we already did this. We know when the victim died. We know how the victim was killed. Because we already got that information. And we know that he was killed at the police department. Hmm. But at the same time, maybe the game wants me to, like, actually ask different things. Well... Or maybe the game will be like, oh, you already knew that. Where was the victim found? Because I'm being dumb. So tell me, where's the victim found? Well, I can't speak on where the corpse was found, but I can say the crime took place in the evidence room at the police department. The evidence room? Wait a second. I've heard of that. Or maybe it did want me to ask more things. The evidence room? Didn't he mention that his testimony just now? This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. So this knife is the thing. There's the connection between the two cases. You seem... Oh, so the game wanted me to present the, the the paper first, then ask this, and then similarly to the uh, red, white, blue corp case, any of the answer, like any of the questions would have led to the same revelation. Eh. Happy? 
Happy we just handed our ticket to the town on this case. With the link between the two cases established, we finally have some leverage. Now we can get Gant to testify about the details. So I guess I then have to present this knife. What? Hey, game, being rude. Or does it want me to press now that we know that information? I guess that's the thing. We'll do that again just to be samey. Because that's what I did. So I guess the game wants me to press on the next thing. All right, so let's press. Chief, the defense's position is simply this. The connection between these two cases has already been proven. <laughs> you don't say. Well, out with it, right -o. What's your connection? Yes, out with it, Mr. Wright. The connection is a place mentioned in the testimony we just heard. The knife found in the lot was stolen from the police department's evidence room. Not to mention the victim had on him the case number on the knife's evidence tag. And we also know that the detective murdered at the police department was killed in the very same evidence room. Indeed, there do seem to be too many connections for it to be a coincidence. Again, just the slow look into the silence, everything. You are creepy, Mr. Gant. You two make a good pair. It took my men two days to find out what you deduced right here. How? How? Genuinely, how? Two detectives are killed on the same day at the same time. Like, that alone would raise flags and would at least warrant some preliminary investigation into any possible connection. Eh. Chief, I request that you release your information on the victim at the police department. See, that's the tricky part. It hasn't been announced yet in all. Can we get the information unofficially? Hmm. Sure, why not? It's unofficial after all. This guy is weird. What? Really? Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed indeed? I'll cooperate, but I can't reveal the name of the victim at the apartment, okay? If you're gonna tell us a little, why not tell us everything? Ah, uh, well, case information is sticky stuff. You have to do everything properly. Oh well, I guess I might as well try to get what I can out of him. Victim's division, victim's ID number. Is there anything in the ID number that would be important to me, though? No. Wait, it already has the ID number on the case thing. 5842189. That seems to be the only thing, because gender wouldn't really matter too much. The gender doesn't matter. Their division, I also don't think matters because we haven't heard anything about division up until now. Well, the victim's ID number. Okay, how about you tell me the victim's ID number? Hmm, sure, why not? It's not like you'll be able to tell who it is from that. Of course not. You won't tell me their name after all. We keep a tight lid on ID numbers, so don't go getting your hopes up. The number is... Again, the silence and just staring. 5842189. Well, that's quite long. And we have to remember these. It drives me nuts. 82... I can't do it. You don't even get the first number right. Well, Mr. Wright, does this tell you anything? ID number of the victim at the police department. This tells me something. Actually, it does, Your Honor. It does. I think. Meaning? It has to be what I think it is. But what does this mean? Well, let's hear what the defense has to say. You say the ID number of the detective who was murdered at the police department tells you something. What does it tell you? Witness! <laughs> what is it, Mr. Wright? 
You're grinning like a schoolgirl on prom night. No, I... It's just... I got confused. Man, this is news. Huh? Just come out with both guns blazing. Like you always do. The police department, the prosecutor's office, two places, two detectives murdered at one time. Actually, I happen to have a police ID number here. Oh, is it yours? No, Your Honor. I'm a defense attorney, remember? This is the ID number of our victim, Detective Goodman. Shame on you, Righto. Personnel ID is a top secret. Detective Goodman's ID number is 5842189. And this means what exactly? Huh? Wait. That ID number we heard from the chief earlier. That started with 82. Hmm, I forgot. You didn't even get the first number right again! The number the chief of the police gave us was 5842189. But wait a second, right? What does this mean? That's what I want to know. The two ID numbers are identical. In other words, the detective killed in the police department's evidence room was Bruce Goodman. What does our witness think about that? Ho <laughs> Sharp as a tag, Righto! Sharp as a tag! But wait, Detective Goodman is our victim! He was killed at 515 in the underground parking lot! Yet a Detective Bruce Goodman was also killed at the police department, in the evidence room at the exact same time! Th that's impossible! So what we're saying is, the same person was killed at the same time? And in a completely different location. What were their twins? Are there twin Goodmans? Order! 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 Chief! What does this mean? No. What I want to know is why didn't I hear about this? Yes, it's top secret, fine, but I'm the prosecutor in charge of the case. Now, just wait a second, Worthy. No need to get all flustered. Your Honor, the police department has made a grave error in this case. Wait. I said, wait. Okay, he looked creepy. Or didn't you hear me? The oversight, the grave error, Mr. Edgeworth, they're yours. What? How? How dare? We informed you yesterday. I believe it was our Officer Meekins who brought you the news. Uh, Officer Meekins? Mr. Wright, where have we heard that name before? Wait, aha! In Edgeworth's office. Um. Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premise? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. You don't mean him. According to Meekins, you didn't accept the report. Hard to believe. But your officer, he told me. He said the report had nothing to do with the Lana Sky incident. Detective Bruce Goodman murdered in the police department evidence room. Mr. Edgeworth, the victim's name is written right on top of the report. <laughs> Why didn't your officer tell me? Honestly, I'm not sure if that officer was capable of making the connection. He did seem challenged. In any case, this is a serious error. A gross negligence of duty on your part, Worthy. But, sir, you could have submitted that report this morning to the court as evidence. Then I... He's so creepy. He just stares. It has to be intentional. No such luck this time, Worthy. Or should I say unworthy? What? Now, what was the second rule of evidence law, hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? Huh? Oh, well, it's, uh... Rule number two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And how is this rule relevant? Normally, you submit a list of evidence to be used in court before the trial. This report wasn't on that list. So, what does this mean? I couldn't submit this evidence until a connection was proven in court. I don't get it. The vic- My dude. You have evidence related to a Bruce Goodman dying. Who was a, a detective. 
we too have a dead Bruce Goodman, who is a detective with the same ID number. This is stupid. This, this is just silly. This is just wrapping tangles and knots for the sake of tangles and knots. Like, if it was played as him being wonky and weird, sure, but it's just like, oh, there was a loophole. Uh, again, we introduce evidence all the damn time. Nah. The connection was just proven by Raito over there. Good job, Raito, my boy. Huh? Uh, I... I was just doing my job. No... No! Imagine seeing lawyers and prosecutors lose their minds in court like this. It seems we have come to the end of this trial. I know you're going through a tough time, Worthy. What of all those rumors? You were even in the defendant's chair just this past December. <laughs> I apologize for this terrible lack of due diligence on my part. Mr. Edgeworth, please, just give me one day. I'll get to the bottom of what happened, if it's the last thing I do. You'd better get results this time, really. You have my profound apologies, sir. Or Mr. Edgeworth. I don't think there's ever been an error this serious in the history of this court. I will grant one for the day as the prosecution has requested. Will that be sufficient, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Whatever your punishment for this is, for your sake, I hope it's not decisive. Very well. Court is adjourned. And that's, that's where the... It took me three hours! Three hours to get to the first to be continued! At least I think there was a to be con Yes, there was a to be continued! Why was there even a to be continued at that point? Okay, sure. I'm losing my goddamn mind. Well... Uh, um, Mr. Wright, so... What's going on with the case anyway? I am a little confused. Huh? Well, um, let's see. What is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death after 5 p.m. on the 21st. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot and the police department's evidence room. What's this and the evidence room part? The prosecutor's office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Technically, the autopsy report just says died between 4 and 5.30. And I'm harping on that because obviously it's going to be important. How it's going to be important, I don't ha know how, because apparently they had to have had a body. And our victim died with one stab wound to the chest. Again, between 4 and 5.30. So did she just stab a dead body? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Or try to, at least. All right, let's do it. Glad she's in good spirits, but I'm not sure she's going to be he much help with this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Wright. Huh? Look, we're in this together, right? I'll prove that these thick-rimmed glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go. Science awaits us. Now inject this man with some magical science. All right, here we are at the prosecutor's office. You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there. Who cares? Yeah, it was only our victim who was killed in their evidence room. No biggie. Besides, my sister would never do such a thing. I know it. And that oil drum. Was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. But that's impossible because it was too heavy. My sister erasing evidence at the crime scene? Never! Even though she says they don't get along, Emma really likes her sister. That's not it at all. It's just, we're both professionals at what we do and I trust her. How do you know what I'm thinking? Are you even real? Big words for a high school student. Well, why, whether there was blood on the floor or not, the water in that oil drum washed it all away. 
Ignorance, ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright. Huh? What's that grunt for? This situation calls for one thing, and that is luminol testing fluid. L luminol? Blood is sticky stuff, you know. You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. But wouldn't the police have already done those tests? Never trust anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. Me? Why do I have to do it? I'm a minor. I can't even drink yet. We're testing blood stains with this stuff, not drinking it. Here, look, I'll lend you these glasses. Huh? You had an extra pair of those things. To test for blood reaction, just spray the luminol on it. Like this, see? Press space to spray it. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. So there is blood there. I wonder if that's what the one thingy is. But why is the tape weird? Why is he hanging out the top half when before... Oh, uh, no? Yeah, it ha he's hanging out top half. I can see her eyes shining behind those glasses. So, is this a blood stain? Uh, it's so... Uh. Emma, you're shaking. It's just, this is my first time seeing real blood. Scientific investigation in action. Okay, well, we definitely know that this is a blood stain, but it doesn't seem like enough to have been stepped in, right? But doesn't something strike you as odd? Scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this, scientifically? The amount of blood. The perpetrator and Detective Goodman fought here, right? Don't you think there'd be a little more blood? I definitely think so. I mean, look at all the blood that's on the sole of the victim's shoe. It is pretty strange. If they fought here, there'd have to have been more blood than this. Um, hey, Mr. Wright? I'm gonna mark up the floor plans with the blood stain, okay? <coughs> See, I'm pretty handy to have around, right? Uh, yeah, and this stuff's pretty handy, too. I saved up my allowance to buy that. Luminol testing fluid from one of the very proud-looking in the sky. Finds blood traces. Spray to use. We can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit their view of the case. And let's drag the hidden evidence out into the light of day. Yeah! It feels like we're really kind of investigating a crime now, doesn't it? Guess I should give the spray on anything suspicious. Ha! Oh, it's Sky. I wonder how that fluid of yours would react to a nice deli box. Miss Star! You only trust your own eyes, hmm? Not bad, you two. This day old deli box is on the house. Sorry, it's just that kind of le lead in doesn't really get my mouth watering. Hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to poison us. Okay, that's cute. They actually decide, hey, you can look over the spray bottle if you want. Someone used a marker to write their name on this. Emma Sky. Don't tell me you bring this a few everywhere you go. Well, you never know when something might go down. Just what kind of world do you think we live in? I don't know, you guys literally live in one that the world decided three-day cases only. Oh, wrong button. I'm a fool. Because... Aha! This blood must be from Lana. No, my sister isn't the murderer. But she did call you, didn't she? At the time of the crime? Her right hand is bandaged. Hey, just whose side are you on? This has nothing to do with taking sides. So, this means that Lana's hand had blood on it. It just keeps getting worse. That's what I uh, wanted to do because my brain went... Well, if she cut her hand, maybe she put it there, but who knows what it means. Today's trial. You certainly put me in a tight spot today. My apologies, Miss Star, but... No, no, it's okay. It was my fault. Oh, we know. <laughs> I witnessed everything from that security room right there, but I was afraid that I wouldn't sound convincing enough, you see. I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry? You lied on the witness stand. That's unforgivable. Little girl, don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. 
I saw Chief Prosecutor Sky stab a man in cold blood, and that testimony still stands. Uh, I swear it on my honor as a detective. She stabbed Goodman. Well, technically you're not a detective anymore. I know this photograph has something important to tell us, but what? Because technically it doesn't show her stabbing. All it does is show... He was already stabbed and in the car at the time. He was dead in the car. Because if you look at this... At the same time, she does have a bloody coat on. And surgical gloves. And the barrel isn't knocked over yet. Or is that just one barrel? One big barrel? Because that's the main thing. Why is there blood on her coat? But it could be that she found Goodman dead in the trunk already. Which is just poor, poor Edgeworth if that's the case. Do, 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 do. Detective Star. So, you were a detective, weren't you, Miss Star? Yes, that was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. No matter how hard in the criminal when they faced me, they coughed it up. Coughed it up? They confessed. They babbled like babies, you know. I'm a, I may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel too. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day I dragged the dirt out of the mouths of suspect after suspect, and before long they called me the Cough Up Queen. Oh, and here I thought someone had gotten food poisoning from your lunches. And you were let go or fired? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case. The SL9 incident. Oh, wow, there's a lot of num letter, letter, dash, number incidents going around, aren't there? Wait, she doesn't mean... So now I guess she, they... I guess, uh, present this? Um, what do you think about this? The SL9 incident. It's written on that knife. And on that note, Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on that case, you know. Really? And that knife was evidence from that case. The murder weapon. It was due for transferal the very day that Goodman was killed. Hmm, the voice cracked there. <laughs> As I suspected. SL9 isn't over. Not yet. Do you think you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? I guess that opened up more. Or not. Hmm. That's weird. It's like... Do you think you could tell us more? And then... Would you like to look at this? <laughs> she didn't even look. She went some hot tea. Let's present the shoe. Because I just want to make sure I go for everything, but I'm just wondering. It didn't activate the thing. If you think about it, I could have taken that picture from the guard room. But even I get flustered sometimes. So you went straight to the scene of the crime. I rushed towards the chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder. That's when I looked, took this photo, you see. In other words, five minutes after the crime? Those five minutes are the whole problem. The hole in my testimony, as it were. The five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You, you lying was the problem. But it still doesn't make sense, because it can't have been five minutes, can it? It can't have been five minutes. Because, again... The murder took place at 5.15, so they say. But then she made a call at 5.18. But that still means that Miss Star had to get down to where this was to take the photo extremely quickly. And then spend a hefty number of time climbing the chain link fence to get to her after she tried the phone and then used her own phone and said something about a muffler to Emma, apparently. You 
lying was the problem. Listen, little girl, I've had many my testimony disregarded before, and I wasn't going to have it disregarded again. Just like that time. That time? That's 09. That incident really opened my eyes to the truth. We're nothing to them. Disposable. Disposable? To who? Two years ago, it was the biggest case I'd ever handled. With Goodman. So Goodman, Marshall, and Miss Sky were all looking it over, and whoever that guy is in the bottom left-hand corner who's probably just set dressing. The police and the prosecutors were desperate for decisive evidence. So, they didn't solve it? On the contrary, it was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and executed. Executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was, they never did find the divisive evidence. Not a shred. What? But the criminal was executed, right? On the basis of evidence, of a sort, made up evidence. What? You mean they executed someone with fabricated evidence? The best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved with the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen, others found themselves out of a job, except Goodman. And you were one of those? Myself and one other person you know well. Wait, could it be? Exactly, Detective Jake Marshall. Oops, I mean Police Department Security Detail Officer Jake Marshall. As professional detectives, we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined, and then it was over, and he was demoted. However, he wasn't forgotten, and ne he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. You haven't forgotten SL9? There was another side to the case, a hidden side. That's what we're after now, and no one up in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait, th those lunches you sell? There's only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. I come here to meet old friends. Boyfriends that can help me investigate. Miss Starr's old boyfriends. How many does she have? Just when all the detectives in SL9 have disappeared, we find new evidence. There has to be a connection. So, rookie. What? It seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. A Salisbury steak lunch? I know a certain guy who might help you if you tempt him with this treat. Steak lunch received from Miss Star. Um, Miss Star? Officer Marshall, is he your, uh, are you his? Are you g g g going out? What do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister do cases, he was so nice. He got along so well with my sister, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me, too, back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now, now he's so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I, I see. Thank you. Officer Jake Marshall. That is a bit odd. We already did that. I do find it kind of interesting. No, that's not what I want. No, clues here. Yeah, don't touch stuff. I kind of find it funny that they didn't, like, update any of this, but at the same time, they don't really. They don't really update this stuff. So this is the famous oil drum. Well, no time like the present. I'll try to kick it over myself. Hiya! That's okay. Don't cry. Anna Sky must be one strong woman. Or it's physically impossible. B block is through there, that's where visitors park. So, Miss Star climbed over this fence? It seems so, yeah. That fence is nine feet high at least. Well, no time like the present. I think I'll give it a little try. Ah! It's okay, don't cry. Maybe there's a Lunchland Olympics team. That's about as red as sports cars can get. Yep, pretty red, all right. The body was found in Edward's trunk, and the lock on the trunk was broken too. So the question is, why did Miss Sky choose this car? So, what model car is it? I think it was called a sedan or a coupe, something like that. 
Those are car types, Mr. Wright, not models. You're a guy, aren't you, Mr. Wright? You're supposed to know these things. Maybe it's about time I got my driver's license. Mood. That's where we found that note. 221 SL9. The SL9 incident. A case that was due for transferal the day of the murder. And the detective in charge of the case was the victim. I wonder what kind of case this SL9 incident thing was. It's kind of hard to guess just knowing the case number. This rope, is it? Yep. So wait, the victim must have died when the killer comes drunk on him. Hmm. Just gonna check over everything. So that's where Miss Star saw the incident from. You can probably see quite a lot from up there. Hmm. That probably means she wasn't lying when she said she saw Miss Guy stab him. Where's the security guard anyway? Well, this is just something I heard, but apparently he went out to buy coffee for Miss Star. That woman is a force to be reckoned with. So this is the famous divider. It sure helped us knock a hole in that testimony today. Come to think of it, this divider helped our case more than the actual witness. The Great Divider, a chip off the old parking block. It's just a wall, scientifically speaking. Hmm, I think that's all that this place has to offer. Let's see. Are you here, Edgeworth? There doesn't seem to be anything different. Well, this place is as classy today as it was yesterday. And I'm sure it'll still be just as classy tomorrow, Emma. Incidentally, Edgeworth's not here. I'm sure he's off doing important investigations. I hope that's what he's doing. I guess we'll have to come back. That's just them saying, hey, move along. Move along now. Get on, move. Go elsewhere. Let's see if we can talk to her and get some information. Why are you hiding things? Looks like Miss Sky is in questioning. I hope the detectives aren't yelling at her. How did you kill him in two places at the same time? Can you imagine? How is she supposed to answer that? Wait a second. Did Mr. Gant say they'd arrested a suspect in the police department murder? Let's come back later. Well, uh, off we go to criminal affairs. We're actually allowed in. There's the gremlin over there. Police station criminal affairs. Wow, everyone looks deadly serious here. Well, there was a vicious murder of a detective down at the police department. Yes, but the same detective was also killed at the same time in the prosecutor's lot. Uh, it makes my head hurt. Well, first things first, let's go check out the police department crime scene. Yes, you sound dead set on investigating. But don't mess up or we could wind up dead. I doubt anyone wants more mysteries or dead bodies around here right now. But it doesn't look like anyone's going to help us much either. Well, we might as well. So this is the police mascot, is it? The Blue Badger, the future star of the police force. The design's a little changed from the one outside. Ah, well, the dancing Blue Badger is still under development, you see. You have it trademarked? <laughs> Absolutely, it's cutting edge stuff very now. I showed this doll here to my daughter and she burst into tears. That's not good, man. Don't show her the moving mock-up outside then, you'll give her nightmares. That must be the chief of detectives. He's glued to his computer screen. What? Detective killed in the evidence room? Tell no one outside the police department? No! I told that old lady at the restaurant everything! Someone's getting a demotion. I doubt it. This world is whack. Police department entrance. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. The detectives are running around so fast they're blurring. I suppose it makes sense. A detective did get killed here, after all. So the evidence room, the scene of the crime. According to the pamphlet we got at the front desk, here it is. She's like a kid in an amusement park for murder. Oh, a real crime scene. Let's go take a look. We were just at one. As always, just quickly check things. Again, it's weird that they don't, like, I feel like the check mark should stay if they haven't given new dialogue. The blue badger is still writhing around today. <laughs> that is such a term, writhing around. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's dancing. <laughs> Speaking of dancing, the whole police department has been dancing around like crazy since yesterday. Can I take it out? Can I take out its batteries? I just can't help but feel he's going to do something naughty. What the fuck do you mean? What do you expect him to do? He's a dancing statue. 
Well, first things first, I'm gonna save again because me paranoia. Paranoia, paranoia, everybody's coming to get me. Oh no. Oh no! It's the Marshall Man! He just took over this place. What's with the decor in this place? It's very eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is the guard station for the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room. Wouldn't we know because we've been to the evidence room? Literally the last case, we were in the evidence room! We got tased there! We got tased, bro. It sure seems that way. Oh, oh. What's wrong? It's those cacti. They're so prickly, so imposing, it's hard to think straight. If you can't handle the cacti, stay out of the desert. What I want to know is if this is a guard station, where's the guard? I have a feeling I know who he is already. Well, first things first, let's examine stuff. Because why not? Yeah, I, these sure are prickly. They must be the real deal. I would think just one big one would be sufficient. These cacti are a lot like my sister, actually. How so? We're getting the emotional music from investigating cactuses. Encased in a cold, rigid shell with spines pointing out in every direction. Just like her. I'm not so sure I see the resemblance. It's more an attitude thing than a physical similarity. There's a security guard uniform hanging there. It looks more like a costume than a uniform, honestly. A leather jacket, leather pants, a leather... What was that thing called? A punchy? A pounchy? A pinchy? Oh, I know! A poochy! Hmm. Wait a minute, that wasn't it. It's a poncho, but I think I'll keep that information to myself for the time being. Why is he so mean to her? <laughs> it looks like there's a video feed from the evidence room here. There's a light blinking below the monitor. It says recording. I bet we could use this computer to check on who went in and out of here. Maybe, but it probably wasn't recording the day that everything went down. There's a swinging door makes this place look like some kind of saloon. But look, it's nailed shut. You can't get in that way. Of course not. If you went through there, the cactus would fall over. Ouch! I'd say it'd be more of a yarg myself. Texas. Look, on the floor, a lasso. Hmm, looks like it's set up to trap something. A trap here? Wait, I know! Maybe someone was trying to catch a wild bull in here! But the lasso miss! You sure have an active imagination. Well, let's try... I guess let's examine the door! The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in! It won't open! You thought it'd be open? I thought we need someone's permission to go in there first. Well, I guess we have to go elsewhere. This place is charged with frantic energy, as always. Please! Uh, wasn't that... Once take lunch, please! Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe! No, no, now's no time for chit-chat, pal. I'm a busy man! What I really need is a steak lunch from Lunchland. Oh, you mean one of these? Actually, it's not for sale. Now he's so depressed. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We've got, we've caught our criminal. Now we just need evidence. The criminal? You mean? You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, right, pal? On the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed in the police department? And the perpetrator. Do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. It's the biggest scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything's topsy-turvy. But, Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, pal, all I know is I need a, me a steak lunch prompto. Standing around here talking isn't going to fill my belly. Wait, don't leave. If you want to know more, head on down to the detention center, pal. Questioning should be over, so I figured he's down there having a good cry. Later. It's Meekins. They've arrested Meekins, haven't they? They had to have arrested Meekins. It's, nobody else could fill that role. It has to be poor Meekins. <laughs> he ran off to the evidence room. Well, this investigation is off to a running start. Well, let's see if we can head there as well. Nope, he disappeared. Well, we go, we'll follow where they want, and we'll go to the detention center. But apparently we can't go to the detention center from here. 
I do not know why. The movement in this game is odd sometimes. It's Meekins, isn't it? Still, I do feel better about things. A little. I mean, they caught the person who stabbed Detective Goodman, didn't they? Uh, yeah. I guess they did. Best to not go too far down that road now. Things will just get confusing. It's Meekins. What was that? Sir, that's what I'm saying! Me, a perpetrator? I'd say I was the perpetrator again, sir! That's what I'd say! Uh, oh, uh, hi! Greetings, sir! Wait, I know who you are. Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth up anywhere on the premise? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. This is the second fucking time that we've seen this, sir. Third time! Officer Meekins! So you're a guard here at the detention center? No, sir! I'm not, sir! I'm a little lost patrolman, like a little lost lamb, sir! Oh, I get it. You're here to deliver a report. No, sir! I, uh, how should I say this? Wait, he isn't. Is he? He does have an injured hand. You... Officer Meekins, you didn't, did you? Uh... Perpetrator Officer Meekins reporting, sir! What? What? Now this is an unexpected turn of events. The moment that they said they had him down crying at the detention center, I was like, I knew it. It had to be him. Sir, I'm a patrolman with the general affairs, sir! Sir! Ow, I can hear you fine, Officer Meekins. I had some business with that day, sir, and so I went to the evidence room, sir. The guard station in front of the room was empty, sir. So normally there's a guard at the evidence room. That's right, sir, because the evidence is kept in the evidence room, sir. Now that security officer was none other than Officer Marshall. Marshall? How could you not know? It screamed Texas. And that is a man who screams Texas here. Nobody else exists to do that. Then, sir, I happened to glance at the security room monitor. That's what I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. A suspicious person, sir! A suspicious person! Yeah! Why is your hand... Uh... Are you... Like... What's the word? Handcuffed to your bag? What the, what the heck is this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I... I... Everything went white! I saw red! I blacked out! And then, when I came to, I was here! In the detention center. But that can't be right, can it? Because... That can't be, because... He must be talking about a different time. Because if he was... If he did it at the same day as the murder, he would... Unless he blacked out and delivered that message to Edgeworth blacked out. How long were you out? Days? Um, might I ask... What happened to your hand? Sir, there was no one to bandage me, sir. So I did what I could do to wrap it up, sir. A bandage on his hand. Just like Miss Sky. Yeah. If only certain aspects of this case weren't dumb, I think this would be really cool. Because there's like a lot of twisting and twining going on here. But at the same time, a lot of the stuff is dumb. Like, oh, I couldn't actually put this into the case because of this, blah, 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 I'm chief of police, blah, blah, blah. When you're doing a high-pitched voice, remember to stay hydrated. Yet another similarity between this case and the one at the prosecutor's office. First things first, tell us how you hurt your hand. Well, first the victim. I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator, correct? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room, right? Sir! Please don't look at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, sir! If you have to label me as a perpetrator or victim, sir, then label me victim! Um, I would, but you happen to be in detention. And alive and well at that. Ah, uh, yes, well, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Well, sir, if I had to label him as a stranger or a total stranger, then I'd say he leans heavily to the total stranger side. So you didn't know him? Sir, I work in a tiny department devoid of light or any creature comforts. I don't know any detectives. So if he was a total stranger, why did you stab him? 
Sir, I had no, no, no intention of killing him, sir. None. Nor do I have any recollection of c killing him, sir. At least someone around here is more confused than I am. Bandage handage. About your hands. Did that happen during the course of the crime? Well, you see, sir, I, uh... Don't you think you should just confess? But, sir, sir, but there was nothing I could do! Nothing you could do? Sir, to tell the truth, sir, when it happened, when the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered, sir! And the next thing I knew, I was unconscious! The next thing you knew, you were... Huh? Then, when I opened my eyes... I was alone in the evidence room, sir! All alone! Alone because... Because Detective Goodman had disappeared! What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hand, sir! Oh, the shock! Oh, the sorrow, sir! Can you all imagine how I felt? The victim's body... disappeared? Come on, the obvious thing is, he went in there, the detective was alive with the knife from the SL9 incident, and pointed it at Meekins. Meekins, like, passed out somehow, and for some reason Goodman stabbed him in the, the in the goddamn hand, and that's probably where the blood on his shoe comes from. He stepped in Meekins' blood and walked away, but then that would also have left a bloody trail, and you'd think that would be... How is this labeled a murder? How did they know? Well, I guess I... I guess they knew that Detective Goodman was there because of the camera, but if they knew about him because of the camera, then they would know that he wasn't killed there, and they would know that Meekins was the one stabbed in the hand, and what is the... What is this case? Ah! Hmm, that's some story. Well, let's present shit. Um, do you think you could take a look at this? Hey! That's it, sir! That's it! That's it! That's what? My head was blank until this very moment! But sir, now I remember! I remember, sir! You mean you remember what happened? Correct! That card! That card was the cause of it all! This ID card? Exactly, sir! That's exactly it! Nothing could be more exact, sir! Nothing! I'd better pry into the, this one a little deeper. Ah! I'm scared of knives, sir! Okay. That's it, sir! Last night, sir! That's the one! I was an apple, sir, in my dream, sir, and I was- I was being peeled! <laughs> that calls back to Phoenix saying that, obviously, Edgeworth used the knife for peeling fruit. On second thought, you don't have to look at the knife. Hmm, he's overreacting to the knife, but I guess he's been through a lot. Look at the badger! I'm sorry, sir, really sorry, but I have no idea what that is. Maybe you should ask Mr. Edgeworth, sir! He's passing the buck, Mr. Wright. It takes a special kind of man to pass the buck to Edgeworth. Do you know SL9? Would you like to take a look at this picture? Hey! Why do you have that? That's... From the day it was taken at the prosecutor's office. The day that Detective Goodman's body was found in that trunk. So this means... This means I'm a free man! Innocent! If this is a dream, sir, then I hope I never wake up! If this is a dream, you'd better wake up right now! Sir, last night! Hmm. We can't present you the steak, because we need to give that to somebody. Do you know this? Very interesting, though. Crime details. Can you tell me what it is you do remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a little lost patrolman, a lost little lamb if you were. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman who was in the evidence room. And that's why you thought he looked suspicious. Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to show me his ID card. Well, that sounds pretty much by the book so far. That's right, sir! That's what I've been trying to tell you! You asked Detective Goodman to show you his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing! Suddenly he pointed a knife at me! What? Sir, I assure you I was as flustered as you are right now. So I whooped and haul... So I whooped and leapt at him! Detective Goodman pointed a knife at him. Do unto others before they do unto you, my own father's words, sir. What happened then? 
Well, my eyes, sir, everything went white. When I awoke, I was here. Right. But again, that doesn't make sense because you delivered a report to Edgeworth, like, the day after the crime. How can you have done that at the... How could you have done that at 5.15 or whatever? I'm losing my mind. None of this makes sense. So, Officer Meekums, why was it that they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. Now, Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman, and the victim whom he met at the scene of the crime didn't show his ID card. That's true! In other words, we have no way of knowing if the victim was really the victim. That's right! I thought there was something fishy about this, because all it takes is the, the outfit, but the and I guess a passing general resemblance, but a white guy with a white coat and a white hat would probably be enough to, like, trick Mr. Meekins. But who would want to dress up as Mr. Goodman to get evidence from SL9 on the day of the transfer? That's the thing. Could it be Marshall? Because Marshall wasn't at his, uh, bibbidi bop. Marshall wasn't at his state. Like his, uh, not state. At his... I'm trying to think of the word. My brain wants to say it starts with a stay sound. But Marshall wasn't at his, like, desk. At his little stakeout place to guard the evidence room if we presume that Marshall was assigned there before the murder. So maybe? And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room, we don't even know if anyone actually died. That's it, sir! That, that's what I wanted to say! That is, I did say something along those lines. Huh? But you still ended up here? They told me that it had to be him, sir. On that day, at that time, Detective Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But you don't remember the events clearly. No, but the videotape is quite clear. Huh? Videotape? From the security camera. The crime! My crime! The crime! I sort of stamp out! It's there! It's me! It's on tape! You've worded that weirdly, Meekins. And you waited until now to tell us this? I'm sorry, really sorry, sir. I'll hand over my badge. I don't deserve it. No thanks, I have my own. Well, I guess we better go check out the crime scene. You are a weird little man. Hey, Mr. Wright, look at who's standing at the Chief of Detectives desk. It's Police Chief Gant. And you're sure this is all? <laughs> you know what it means if there's anything missing. Sir, I'm sure it's most likely totally perfect. We, uh, under the seat cushion behind his computer monitor inside his personal coffee machine, I skipped over a line. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away. Deal? Yes, sir. We'll scour the place again, sir. Chief of Detectives looks a little flustered. Ha ha ha, righto, my boy. How have you been? Swim much? Oh, Chief Gant, reporting for duty, sir. Why are you saluting him, right? You are a creepy man. You disturb me. Is this the first time we've heard this music? Um, is Edgeworth going to be okay? Oh, were they? Oh, you know they're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yep, well, they've had no end of trouble with the boys since last year. You mean the incident on Gord Lake? It doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in the defendant's seat, does it? And you, you got someone else found guilty in that case, right, right? Oh, Von Karma. It would be hilarious if Von Karma was just a voice in his head from trauma. Come on, right? Can't you see that there's something weird with this Gant man? His eyes aren't even normal. A legend he was, undefeated in his 40-year career. But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. 
In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of turmoil, you might say. Why, they do just about anything to restore their reputation. Now, depending on what that inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. What? Evidence room incident. It's downright odd, I tell you. The detective getting killed on their turf, too, I mean. There being the prosecutors, I assume. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? Now, now, Raito, I can't give away all our secrets just like that. And this in particular, well, it's a little sensitive, and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets. Can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the chief of detectives chap shut. Ah, uh, he was the one you were picking on earlier. Huh? You saw that? Whoops! I wonder what it was that he wanted the chief of detectives to do. Let's see if we can find a dis kind of discreetly ask him. Well, while we're here, let's see if we can just hand him things. Ah, uh, sorry, Raito. I'm run through of that stuff. <laughs> through, I say. Go find the guy who can't see, seem to sit still out there. The busy one. The guy who can't sit still? Does he mean Detective Gumshoe? Either him or the Dancing Blue Badger. Would you like to look at the Dancing Blue Badger? Can we ask you about SL9? Because it doesn't hurt to show things to you. <laughs> Granted, it could just be it explicitly saying, Nah, nah, go, go. I suppose it is. Nah, nah. Go, go. Oof, sorry you had to see that. Uh, what exactly did the chief of police want you to do? Well, see over there? That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it for anything that might be a clue. They took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So nothing belonging to Detective Goodman is still here? Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? It's not important. He didn't even finish writing it. It's a lost item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item? Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date on it is February 21st. Better make a note of this just in case. A half-written document dated 1221 can only be submitted to the Chief of Police. Could it be that he was looking for his ID badge and or wallet? Maybe? Granted, maybe... 1221, the exact same date as, uh, the other note, right? The SL9 note. I should really get back to investigating the police department crime scene. You are a weird man, Gant. Guard station. I wish I could, like, well, I thought we were meant to be here. Or maybe we can go in. No, we cannot. Damn you, world. I will murder your soul. Or was I supposed to glance around with the... the spray, maybe? I just noticed. Why is there duct tape on the poor badger? Maybe he's poorly made. Well, let's go to the guard station and I guess... Oh, maybe we could check these things over. I keep forgetting that we can do this. Let's see. Ingredients. Meat. She must mean beef. She probably just wrote it generically. Uh, yeah. Let's hope so. Of course, as a scientist, I have to check what additives she used. Go to town. Huh? It says here, hours of sweat and labor. So that's why the sauce is so salty. That's disturbing. Wow, my mouth is watering. I can almost hear the sound of steak frying on the grill. No doubt it's all cold and tough by now. Nope, I'm sure it's delicious. Miss Star poured her heart into making this. So long as she didn't put any other organs in there. <laughs> 
I do find it amusing. They're like, yeah, go to town. Go, <laughs> go ahead and investigate the box lunch. ID. He couldn't even remember his own ID. That also implies that he forgot his... Or forgot that he lost his number, right? Because he put 59 when he was trying to write down his ID number because he couldn't remember it because it's long and he didn't have his ID to look at for his ID number. I forgot that what I was doing. I'm a fool. Or maybe the game wants me to... Hmm. Here, I thought it would want me to do something. Let's spray about! Because... Hmm... Because I don't even know what I'm looking for. Hmm. Well, let's look at the camera again, maybe. Hmm. Because I've already checked everything here. And I think I've already checked over all the evidence. Because I checked over you. 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 I don't think there's anything specific. Hmm. Well, since we have this, let's spray everything! What if there's murder on the blue badger? It would be funny if we had only, like, a limited amount of spray. But at the same time, that seems... Detectors ga desks, computers files, diddly D. Don't spend a lot of time at their desks. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something. I know, the killer used a cassette tape. What a crafty trick. That gunshot was a fake. This is good. No one would expect a cassette tape in this day and age. He's not writing a report. He's writing a <laughs> novel. Poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. Ah. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm missing something, because I examined everything, and there shouldn't be anything new on you. Well, maybe we could examine the knife again? <laughs> Excuse me. Small knife, it says dip. We already know. Bring steak to people, I suppose. I don't think there's anything else to search for here. Hmm. Hmm. Where are people? Where are people and things? There does seem to be just a lot of places to go. Hmm. And again, I've already examined everything here. Unless they expect me to do something that I don't know if they want me to do, well, let's listen to the police. Look, that patrolman is saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. Answer me, how many fingers do you see? I'm sorry, I don't know! Well, that's 20 for the left, but nowhere near that for the right. Get glasses, officer. That wasn't a salute, it was an eye test. They make a good pair. Hmm. 
Maybe we come here. Would you like steak? Tell me, what do you think to do? Where should we begin? Well, it's obvious we should begin with, you know, that thing. The mystery of the victim, I guess. How could one man, Detective Goodman, be killed in two places simultaneously? Oh, well, you see, we should go to the police department. The evidence room, was it? Uh, I'm not being very useful here, am I? No, no, you're being very helpful. So it still wants me to go to the detective place. The, the, yeah, the, the evidence room. But there's nothing to do here. There is nothing to do. Nothing at all to do here. Unless it wants me to look and like, oh, the ID number. Sergeant Nope, nothing new. Mmm. 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 There's just nothing to do. I can't go in there. I examined the thing. Because we need someone's permission, but I don't have anybody. What? Am I supposed to bribe uh, Gant with the steak? I suppose, but. Gant was like, oh, go find the man. Go find the dude. Would you like steak? Nope, sorry, Rido. Hmm. And we've already looked at you. I'm losing my mind. Because I, I, I don't know where to go. Uh, I'm. Uh, I, I, I. Let's offer steak to you, I guess. Here, steak! We've already been through that. Would you look at this? And you don't want it. I think I already showed that to Meekins. Do I have to go and show that to the, uh. To the man, to the man, man, maybe, and be like, hey, your dude uh, missed this. Maybe. Your dude missed this? No. It, the game is saying, go find, uh, go find Dick Gumshoe. Oh. Game? Could you at least, like, not do that, like, normally, they aren't so, dis like, normally, when more things come up, there's, like, a bit of a tell. I don't think there was a tell there. Permission to enter. Actually, I was wondering if you, I could ask you a favor. Hmm? Well, I never thought the day would come when Raito asked me for help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. So creepy. Just stands there. Blinks. Music fades away. Now, Raito. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I don't need to investigate after all. Raito, please, do I look like a selfish man? Huh? Heck, if anyone asked me, sir, could I borrow $50? I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. It just goes to show, you never know until you ask. And for you here, you can borrow this. Uh, hey, this is a detective's ID, isn't it? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Yes, sir. It's an honor, sir. We could have just used Mr. Goodman, sir. You just run along now. Do your best now. Later, folks. I did not expect for a new conversational to be added. <laughs> it looks pretty cool on my lapel, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir, because, sir, we get to go into the evidence room now, sir. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Probably. Okay, so that's the mystery meat that we were missing. Bull! I guess we have to examine it again. <laughs> the evidence room is beyond that door. And we have the ID card from Chief Gant. Let's just walk in. It won't open. Aha! The card reader is turned off, see? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well, what's made my bambino skies so gray? 
Officer Marshall. Why does it have to be him? What's that? Why does it have to be him? Look for. As you may have surmised, this is my saloon. Um, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw! That card you got there is on your chest. That's better than... <laughs> my brain, it is melting. That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. Yeehaw? Well, what do you stand there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's awaiting. Looks like the card reader's on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with you hombres. You're busy then. Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us hombres. He'll probably do the same thing, so... Would you like some steak? That smell... Ah, reminds me of Texas. So, Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this from my baby? You... Don't tell me. No, well, no, I, I, I was going to say that if he had gotten all this Texas stuff in a single day because he watched a special, I would have lost my mind. But no, we saw a flashback of him two years ago investigating SL9, so no. Oh, that would have sent me for a loop and I would have gotten angry for some reason. I don't know why. Um, yeah, Miss Star. What's this? What? What's wrong? A filet steak lunch. I see, I see. I don't see. I wonder what it means. Steak lunch given to Officer Marshall. All right, Bambina. You win. Ask anything. <laughs> Finally, it seems like... He's willing to talk. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, and I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the detention center told us. Ah, that poor little doggy. Poor guy kept getting his name wrong and calling him Meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but since I got demoted from detective two years ago, well, I might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know. So, what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well, I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. No, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. There's no need for people here, anyhow. These newfangled machines do a bang-up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't take to machines much. Kinda like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know? Marshall. Miss Star told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a rawhide wrangler on the scene of a crime. That's all gone now. Like a drinking hole in a prairie fire. You're still investigating the SL9 incident with Miss Star, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. And that's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what had actually happened. There are some things you're better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, the case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? The day of our case? That's right. The evidence transfers. Edward was talking about the transfers, too. Security system. I know what my... I know what maybe two of the machines in here do. Only two of them? There must be a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, in the machines, well... I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower of my steaks. The easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Meekins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Meekins and Detective Goodman, are they on one of the tapes? I reckon they might be. You're the security guard and you reckon? One more thing. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. There's a card reader by the door. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. 
Super 7s at 420. So yeah, 5842189 entered at 414, uh, 514. So, okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around things because, wait, wait, I I'm thinking things through because it's all weird, but okay, this proves that at least somebody pretending to be Goodman entered this place at 514, a minute before the supposed attack here. And then supposedly, I guess, Meekins entered right after. That's fairly quick. <laughs> so that means that somebody who pretended to be Goodman was here at 515 and attacked Meekins. Why they think that Meekins killed Goodman is, I have no idea. Especially considering that they sent Meekins to Edgeworth with the report that Goodman died at the police. Blah, blah, blah. blah. So, the next thing that doesn't quite add up is the fact that whoever went in there had to have been... What's his name? Uh, not what's his name, but... Whoever went in there had to have gone in to get the evidence for SL9 and got the knife that was then pointed at Meekins. And then it was only later, I, I, I pause it, the murder weapon for SL9 was not at the murder scene of Bibbidi Bop Goodman. Goodman was at... Ba -ba -ba. Goodman was at the prosecutor's office, maybe thinking that Edgeworth ran off with the SL9 stuff, maybe? And then was some whatever the hell happened, presumably Lana Sky killed him. But what if, what if, the murder weapon for SL9, the knife, was not there yet? And this only found its way to the muffler after Goodman had been killed and after Lana had been arrested. But then that doesn't make much sense in the idea that how would Lana have... What if Lana didn't say muffler? Because Emma claims that she didn't say anything. What if this has to do with Marshall and Sky? Not Sky. Star. What if Marshall pretended to be Goodman in a Goodman outfit, stole his ID, went in there, and got the knife? And then they knew that Goodman would be far away at the prosecutor's office somehow, and that's why uh, Star Angel got her boyfriend in secure. I accidentally clicked the... Bleh. But yeah, that's the only thing that I can think. Marshall was pretending to be Goodman to get the knife, then attacked Meekins to, I don't know, uh, have an, a reason to leave the conversation and confuse the poor patrolman. And then L Lana Sky was seen finding the body at, in Edgeworth's car, maybe? Maybe? It... it Okay, we don't know if he was dead or not then, but then again, between 4 and 5.30, autopsy report, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina, I can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing? But first, transferal. Sorry, but could you explain what the whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They're kept here under the Prasad and Detective supervision for two years. So we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? But only for two years. So what happens uh, to the evidence after two years? It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault at the county sheriff's department. And that's what we call transferal. We do it every February. I see now. 
transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to be reopened again. Never to be reinvestigated. And that happened to SL9 two days ago. Well, I'm going to present to you ID. See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, the one that was on the ground in the parking lot. The number on this is 5842189. Officer Marshall, show us that ID record again. Look, the fourth number, it's a perfect match. It was used at 514, right before the stabbing. What's more, there's only one of them cards in the world. So when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But wait, what did Officer Meekins say? Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing! Suddenly he pointed a knife at me! My leading theory is, again, that's not actually Goodman. Somebody pretended to be Goodman and they didn't want to show Goodman's ID because, aside from his obvious, like, ah, the ascot, the white trench coat, the white hat, if they showed Meekins the ID that they had to enter the room, it would have instantly outed them as being not Goodman. If he had his ID card then... <coughs> Excuse me. But, yeah. Why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekins? All right, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. IDs of all who entered the evidence room on 221. I can only assume that the All Sevens guy is going to be important for this. I've got an idea. Maybe I should show this to list to other people with IDs here. Well, if that's that, I shall mosey on into the evidence room. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room. It's really kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, M Mr. Wright. You can't scare me. Hey. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> Did he slap us? Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts on the head, pal. So is it true what I heard? Right, oh please, do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asked me, sir, can I borrow fifty dollars? I'd give them fifty dollars, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's desire. Knock yourself out. I, I, I need to find a good voice for him. Yeah, that's true. So cheap a police gant. We'll loan anyone fifty bucks, even me. Oh, so that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. But guess what? You got permission from the chief, so now you're boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you'll want to have this. Evidence room floor plans added to the court record. Well, let's take a look at the... If I want to present, I want to look. Hmm. Yep. Makes an L shape. Enter one way. Oh, hey. Well, I guess we'll, we'll talk to him and then present. Boss for a day. So, Detective Gumshoe, your boss for the day? That's right! It's an honor! After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? They're using yesterday's findings to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you got kicked out of the investigation. Again. I'm adamant, though! I'm gonna take control and put this case to rest! In my own evidence locker, pal! You have a locker in your two, Detective? <laughs> of course! I'm a detective after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. Only you can open? Edgeworth. I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the inquiry committee right now, right? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in court today. I see. I guess this is what you call fate. Mr. Edgeworth just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. You know, the one that we've never heard of before. 
That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth, even though he was a, a big shot lawyer, uh, not lawyer, but prosecutor man with like a great record that got everybody guilty until we came along and uh, it wasn't until the uh, murder on Gord Lake that things went weird. But yeah, sure, uh, two years ago, it was the case that m really went down, m sure. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about the case. This place is more high-tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed, so only one detective can open it. Using their ID card? Well, that's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. Well, I'm on my third card since entering the force already. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, believe it, I can't lose my own right hand. My own right hand. Meekin's left hand was cut. And... Lana Sky's right hand was cut. Meh. Oh, you mean your fingerprint? Exactly, pal. The lock for each fing locker is coated with a fingerprint. So the only locker who can open is our own. Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handles, see? The handles? On the other side of the handles is a sensor. And if the wrong person touches it, zap, you get a shock. If that's what happened, my hand would be a black and smoking every day. In any case, the lockers aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Only the assigned detective's prints can unlock it. Indicator lamp lights up when it is open. Well, let's look around. Wow, look at this big pile of junk in the corner. That looks like a car door. It's a pair of handcuffs attached to the frame. Maybe the guy they caught was some sort of escape artist and got away. Hey, that's one of those human profiles for range testing. He's been shot square in the forehead. Better him than us. Oh, hey! There's, uh... The fishing pole and the, the metal detector. Some sort of bulky equipment is gathering dust here. What sorry looking fishing pole that is? Ah, that's my personal pole! I never did get around to using it. Wait, I've seen that somewhere before. Right, pal, that's the metal detector. The one that led to the solving of that case out on Gord Lake, remember? Right. Ah, that feels like it was ages ago. And hmm, I don't think I've seen this one before. Oh, that, that's a bug sweeper. I'm sure it'll come in handy in solving some case sooner or later. That cheap looking box? You don't judge a person or machine by that cover. You gotta look at that heart. Either that's going to be used in this case, or it's a, a foreshadow to future cases. This place is stuck with evidence. Stuck with dreams. I'm not so sure about dreams. Hmm. It won't open. Did you really think it would? Hey, pal. Our security system is high-tech around here. Why is there... Yeah. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. What is a song paint doing here? Since the dawn of time, true art has always been a war against oppression. True art? I noticed that there's blue and yellow paint here. Perhaps we're witnessing the birthplace of the blue badger? Well, you might say this is my studio. Here? In the evidence room? Look, this one's open and the red indicator light above the door is lit. That locker is coated with Detective Goodman's fingerprint. Detective Goodman's locker? Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like that? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. We must have taken the contents elsewhere. Someone left a glove here, but only one. Detective Gumshoe, maybe. There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know. You mean SL9? It does have a tag on it. Rubber glove. Hmm. Extremely thin. It seems pretty thick if you ask me. Wow, someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Detective Gumshoe, perhaps? There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of hooligan. That's apparently from the case. The case? The SL9 incident, pal. See the sticker on one of the pieces there. Another piece of SL9 evidence. Take a looker. <laughs> take a look. Take a looker. Take a closer look. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before whatever it was broke. 
You want to try to put it back together? Ah, good luck, pal. There's no job for amateurs. Well, I spent good three hours on that before I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tube of glue. Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try and putting the rest in place. <laughs> Interesting. Something that's like a sharp angle down. Sharp angle with a small divot. wants to use the E button for rotating. This one seems obvious. I think it'll be you. At least I thought it was. All you. And here I said it would be obvious. Fool be me. That one matches up. Huh. still a missing piece. Somebody absconded with the most important oh, part. Huh? Well, I think we did it, but some of the pieces are missing. Yeah, I got that far too in two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. 
Were some pieces stolen? I bet they were missing to begin with. Still, it doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. I kind of understand how it got broken. Jar pieced together from fragments found at the crime scene. A piece is missing. What, the handle? Unstable jar. Well, that was a fun little excursion. What's this? Blood? It's a little worn, but there's definitely a handprint there. It looks like someone tried to wipe it off. Mr. Wright, what if there are other bloodstains left in the room? We should use the, her testing fluid to check it out. But before we do that, I do want to present some things to you. Could you take a look at this ID card record? Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card record for the people who came in here on the day of the stabbing. I heard the rumors. So it was Goodman who came in here at the time of the murder. Whoa! What is it? The, 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 the second number! It's not your ID number, is it, Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth! What? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth! What? What? Well, I guess that wraps that up. Why would Edgeworth have come here to the evidence room? Hmm, so... At 440... Which is a, quite a bit before any of the murders. And somebody... So he came in 20 minutes after somebody, and somebody came in 10 minutes after him... And then somebody, 24 minutes, Bruce Goodman came in. Interesting. <laughs> I say nothing. Nothing! Detective Goodman's note and that switchblade knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SL9 connection? That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know, two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was the man to be feared. But why would evidence from that case turn up now? I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left on the case. I just want to go ahead and just show you random things. Why not? God, there's so much evidence. That's the photo that Miss Starr took. Anything you can tell us about it? That Miss Starr is quite the lady. Well, I remember it was winter. I was 16. Is the only one who ever got me to talk about what happened. Sixteen? That's how old I am now. I wonder what happened. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe wore a trench coat in high school, too. That seems like he would be. Like he would. This is my crowning achievement, my masterpiece, you might say. But art is always misunderstood, pal. Art? He was dancing proudly on the day of the award ceremony. There were a lot of people coming and going after the ceremony. So they took the blue badger away for a while. Really? Why? Oh, they said it was shameful or something like that. Shameful? I toiled night and day! I sympathize with Detective Gumshoe, but I can see why they moved it. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Edgeworth got there the other day. So yeah, I think I already listened to this one. Brain is just like, hey, I want to do things. Well, now we shall begin the spraying. First things first. Get a clear look. I knew it. This is someone's right hand. What? What's the matter, detective? The, the, this locker. It's mine. It's yours? Please. You have to help me. When they come to take me away, promise you'll testify that I wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pals? This is an important clue. I'll jot it down on the floor plans. I'm counting on you guys. Believe me, you can't trust the police. What? But you're a detective. He is a silly man. Here I figured that there would be like, mo oh, there's more. That must have been one of the massive, one massive pool of blood. Never seen anything like it. 
I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe detective... Maybe detective Goodman was actually an alien. That proves that something really happened in front of this locker. I'll make a note of it on the floor plan. Hey, if you didn't want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. Let's ask about the SL9 incident. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violence was a murder? A serial killing. A serial killing? Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. But the killer made a mistake and Mr. Edgeworth built his case around that to nab him. And this was two years ago? That put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight and started the rumor mill. Rumors about forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleaned up with the transferal the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was the detective in charge of the SL9 incidency. So... so that switchblade knife... The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself? What, is that all we have to look at? Hmm. If you put these pieces together, it makes a jar. There are two things that bother me. One, why are some of the pieces missing? Two, doesn't it seem like a little unstable? No wonder it broke. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it, like, it doesn't have a wider base? I'll make sure to remember the next time I make a jar. What do you think of this jaw? What do you think of this glove? What do you think of these security systems? You can't open the lockers if your fingerprint doesn't match. If you can open it, they'll give you 50 cents! <laughs> what? Note, the police department lacks faith in its lock system. After all, Detective Goodman was stabbed here after opening his locker. But at the same time, he was found dead over the prosecutor's office. That is something. Okay, this is amusing. Oh, yes, just a close-up. Well, SL911. The tag says SL911. I guess this is another piece of evidence from that case. You know, I never did care for the word tag. It's confusing. Huh? What's so confusing about that? You know how many other words sound like it? Bag, gag, nag, lag, zag. Zag? Is that a word? Do you challenge me? What, are we playing a word game now? Hmm. Hey look, they're hard to make out, but there are some red stains here. Hmm, looks like blood. Do you think Detective Goodman's blood somehow got on this when he was stabbed? Not likely. This is blood looks like it's been here for months, maybe longer. This jar was evidence in the SL9 incident. That might... that might be when the blood got on it. <laughs> hmm. Huh? This thing doesn't have a bottom! That's weird. I wonder which way... which side is up. Better yet, what's the purpose of a bottomless jar? At least it doesn't collect dust inside, right? Very interesting. Maybe there's another missing piece? Is there anything else to look at in here? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe we examine this again after we spritz it? Or maybe... Oh, maybe if we go to the evidence room floor plans? Hmm. Huh. 
I don't know. Something just doesn't feel right. It just feels like I should be finding more. Like more blood. Something. Hmm. Did we spray over here? There's something poking out of that locker. Wrong thing. Blah. There's something sticking out of here. Looks like a shirt. I guess it must be evidence for some case. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe put this here. There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of slob. I'm not responsible for the evidence here. That said, I thought that evidence locker was opened recently. How do you know? If you leave things hanging out like that, the evidence gets dirty or ripped. The guard checks on that kind of stuff and notifies the detective responsible. How many times have I had him breathe it down my neck about some silly evidence? Sounds like Detective Gumshoe leaves evidence hanging out a lot, too. I bet he doesn't tuck in his shirt under the trench coat, either. If you're gonna tuck behind someone's back, don't do it right in front of them, pal. I'm going to guess that that is the coat. Is it? Hmm. Wrong thing. My brain, it's going a million miles an hour. When can we dust for fingerprints? Oh! There we go! Why am I getting a reaction here? There's no reason for Murderer to touch this spot if he fled out the door. This might just be something significant. Hey, that's some pretty amazing stuff you got there, pal! What, this? It's called luminol testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I'd like to get some too! I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief! where you get this, Emma? I always buy it by mail order. Well, I'd better jot this down on the floor plans. Hey, pal, look at the time! Was there something you needed to go, uh, needed going to? It's just that Mr. Edgeworth's inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm gonna give him my report for the day. What is that? Is that a flamboyant man restaurant? Why would you give him? Why is your report a restaurant? It might help, you know. Report? You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? The one that says nothing but no problems? Hey, it's Miss Rudgeworth we're talking about. I'm sure he can use a report like this. I believe. His report is that there's no problems. <laughs> Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? My muff, pal! Later! I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say, too. Do you know Vase? Does not know Vase. Do you know Glove? I should probably read this, because, eh. Uh, about the only thing they trusted was their shooting hand. Um, was this... This is neither Wild nor West here. Aha! Uh -huh. But that and this are two different things entirely. I guess so? Huh, I'm lost. Looks like we need some evidence to get anywhere with this guy. Evidence locker? Nope. Floor plans. Uh, maybe your ID? Hmm. He doesn't seem to care. Well, that's everything. We shall move along then. Well, let's see. Anything new to talk about? Nothing new to talk about. Let's move along. Let's go to Criminal Affairs, see if there's anybody here. There's nobody here. Uh, let's... Well, I guess actually let's go to the... Criminal Affairs, and then we'll go to detention, because movement in this game is odd. Hey, you! What do you think of this? Officer Meekins, could you... Damn it, I need your ID number on this, you fool! You maroon! You little slutty of man! I still don't know why Windbag sent weird things to... To my man, to Edgeworth. What do you think about this? He 
does not seem to care. I can only assume that none of this matters to you. Very well, we move along. High Prosecutor's Office. Ooh, I know, and I, I'm gonna spray that trophy. Bellhop! Ah, oh, guests, my apologies. Oh, it's you! Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave so long. Is Edgeworth here? You're standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Right. He has the hotel bringing him ho tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry? I am. By the way, Detective Gumshoe is lo- Oh, no, completely wrong person talking. By the way, Detective Gumshoe is looking for you. Ah, uh, yes. He brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Um, the real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. First we're gonna save, because... Again, you never know if you do something out of order. But I just, I gotta know. Is there any murderizing with that trophy? Aha, uh -huh, I wanted to know. <laughs> I just, I would like to imagine that Edgeworth is just watching Wright go about spritzing everything in his room. Just not even bothering to ask any questions. Inquiry committing. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, we decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You are lucky this time. Again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Tomorrow's trial. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However, something happened. They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Yes, any further investigation for this case will be directed by the chief of police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I see. Why, I ask you. Why? All along, I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still... Ah, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Mister, look at the ID card. Oh, right. I'd better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage. Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, yeah, so that's true. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? It would have to be, uh, it would have to be if the evidence was already filed. The chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it is? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about this other case. I better make a note of it. Unrelated evidence. Stubborn as always, I told you, this has nothing to do with the current case. Would you take a look at this? Right, please, I'm the prosecutor on this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on the tea, just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very polite manner. Whose side are you on, anyway? Maybe if I just show him the, my best evidence, I can get a reaction out of him. I want to show you my, uh, I want to show you my, my badge. Oh, I wanted to comment on my badge. I'll just show them all the random stuff that we have. How about this vase? How about this evidence floor plan? Evidence locker. Do I have to show you the thing that you just showed me? Is that it? I think we just showed him that. 
Come on, let's do- Oh, what? Darn you, game. You've used the same kind of thing. He must be talking about his father's murder in that elevator. Okay, Edgeworth. Why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. And then, activates the allegations of forgery. <laughs> That's the problem. Like, I feel like they should, like, have an obvious, like, ting when you give somebody the proper thing so you don't just assume you accidentally, like, gave them the wrong thing again. The SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of the investigation was the deputy chief of the police at the time, Damon Gant. That wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago too then. He was a top officer, and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Wow, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth? What I want to know is why was the deputy chief of police on the investigation? In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. Don't tell me you forged evidence. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't? Of course not! I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code, and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wanted to know something. M my sister? What? If you were still studying forensic science... Huh? Yes, of course. Why, just today Mr. Wright and I were using this. Luminol testing fluid. Well then, you might have use for this. Alumina aluminum powder for taking fingerprints. It's been chemically treated for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure we are the enemy you know? I'm no saying today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder and those fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, thanks! How about giving those to Detective Gumshoe as well? Fingerprinting set and fingerprint file received. Well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right. I do seem to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. Huzzah! New tool unlocked! Alright. New tool. New tool. Ah, uh, can I not use it all willy-nilly however I want? It does not seem like I can use it just however I want. I wanted to fingerprint the phone. Well, off we go to the evidence locker again. Hope we don't get shanked. Everybody's fucking gone. Evidence room, sector three. Our investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Two of them, actually. Here, in this blood on de detective's evidence locker. Let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. But what about the other suspicious handprints on the other one? Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will leave behind the clearest print. I really can't tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. Well, I guess... this one. Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. It was starting to get the sparkle in her eye. First, we sprinkle the aluminium powder around. Huh? How do we do that? With space, see? Ah, it looks like it did the trick. The aluminium powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? With E. Exciting, I know. Imagine you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. Ah, that looks fun. Might just be... <laughs> I might just be getting used to this stuff. It's fine. Oh, no, it, that's not what I said. It's like, it might get you... My brain is just on fire today. It's fine. You, it won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away extra. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. I guess I better give it a try. Pressing E. Maybe I have to hold it? I am pressing E.
Oh, maybe I have to really spread it around. Ah, there we go. Aha! You did it! You found one! But this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm, now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does that mean? It's gloved. I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? The person who left this glove must have been worn uh, must have worn gloves. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here! Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the locker door closely again. It seems like there are other fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm. Fingerprints outside the blood. You mean that? Ah! Fingerprint. Just gotta make sure that I actually get a... What do you want from me? I've blown and I've blown. Hmm. I mean, there's a clear fingerprint. Do you want me to, like, compare? Because the last one happened after I, like, spread around enough in blue. There we go. Yay, a print is so clear it's dazzling. D dazzling? Anyway, this friend took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up the right way. Right away. So we're not done yet? This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint, but not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth. And point out the person you think these prints belong to. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it is? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints would we most likely find on the evidence locker? Gumshoe? Gumshoe! This is handy. Aha! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking so what. Okay, so we came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll off the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. That's what I was saying. We probably should have done that from the beginning. This is where we got the luminol fluid reaction, right? Right! There was a handprint here. Okay, wanna try using this? There go her eyes sparkling again, check for prints. Okay, let's check for prints. That's the spirit. Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area of the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding using it chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints. Did you say the probability of your hypothesis is high? Just don't ask me. Anyway, we must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. It's other than the ones left by the ha bloody hand. Ah, so that's what they mean. Like a finger over here. Just gotta throw down the cocaine. Just completely and utterly. All the way. And blow. Just cover it all up as possible to please the gods of this game. Because it's just a very angry game sometimes. There we go. First, let's start with Lana. Nope. Emma Sky. Nope. Angel. Nope. Maybe Damon Gant? It's a little similar. Nope, not at all. 
Wait, Jake Marshall. This seems very suspiciously similar. Comparison complete. Match found. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? Marshall's fingerprints added to the court record. That's gotta be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma, this is decidedly different from Detective's gumshoes prints. The luminol reaction. The blood and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh, oh. So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints on a wiped blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall... Looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call decisive evidence. I... I don't believe it! We literally used science to discover this! We literally did! And Jesus Christ, that... <sighs> once again, that took a while. And once again, I do believe that this is where we shall end for now, because, again, that was quite a while. Almost three hours. And here, I thought we would just, like, jump right into investigating. Nope, we went into a trial segment and then investigating, so that technically fills my quota. But this means that we're gonna be doing, like, a stream per day for this. Which I guess would still end up with... Oh no, that would end up with, like, four. Mm. Oh boy. Well, oh, this is difficult. Well, no, because my brain is on fire. Meh. But yes, this one was much more interesting than the first section, because we actually got to do, like, the mini games of uh, spraying for blood and dusting for fingerprints. The characters are kind of interesting in this one. And now that we actually have a meat to the extra aspect of the case... There is more interesting things. It's just that the court segments are weird. The court segments are weird and feel contrived to a degree. The, oh, Edge, and also the fact that Edgeworth was like, I don't know. There's just something about the presentation at times that's off. Like Gumshoe going, that's the day that was the beginning of the end for Edgeworth, even though it was his first big case. It was never mentioned up till now. Maybe they're trying to tie into the rumors that have always existed. Like, oh, he forges evidence. And that's what this is about. But it's like, again, it's all in the presentation. That's all that it is. It's worded weirdly. They talk about it weirdly. It's just something is off in the presentation of this. But aside from that, it is interesting to get to know the characters and, like, the various pieces, because the mystery overall seems cool. Even if I already kind of discovered it, that Marshall probably dressed up as Goodman and used Goodman's ID to get into the evidence room. But how would he have gotten his fingerprints? Maybe it's on the gloves? He used, like, extracted fingerprints from uh, Goodman to access his safe? But then why would Marshall then attack uh, the boy? Why would he attack... Ba -ba -da -ba. Why would Marshall attack Meekins? Or for that matter, why would Meekins be arrested for murder if there wasn't a body? Because wouldn't they have tested... The... But uh, there's just so much going on, because... This definitively happened at five. Uh, at five fifteen, we know that this attack had to have happened at five fifteen. We don't know if the attack on Bruce Goodman himself happened at five fifteen, because the goddamn autopsy report says between four and five thirty. So, there's still a bunch of mystery. We don't know if we can trust Miss Star, Lana Sky. Might have just found the dead body. But then there comes the aspect of how did the 
murder weapon for the SL9 end up in the tailpipe? Why did Lana seemingly say muffler when trying to call Emma? And if we take that as being... Or maybe... Could it have been that Angel Star wanted the testimony thing to go that way? Right? Because she was so insistent on Muffler. But then at the same time, Lana did have, like, a scarf muffler that was then used to wrap the SL9 knife with. Mm, there's a... Uh... This is much more topsy-turvy than any of the others because all of the other ones had just a small cast and a relatively simple idea of what went down. In the first case, we it was just literally three people. The victim, the murderer, and Larry. That was it. In the second case, it was Maya, Mia, Phoenix, the, uh, the pink lady, and Red Man. Red White Man. It's like all of the like wins, where's, and who's were much more like easily defined and kind of obvious to a degree. This one's all over the place with many moving parts. Dear God, have you? We are like on page three of evidence for the first time. Oh, utter madness. But overall, I don't know. This case definitely feels off, and apparently it's the worst case in all of Ace Attorney that some... <laughs> if chat had anything to say about it. So who knows? I'm kind of enjoying it, but it's kind of weird. But I remember. But yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, I have two YouTube channels. One, Neon Icy Wings, for edited content. I, I, I swear, edited content is coming... I just need to wrangle brain. And then I have Neon Icy Games, which is the stream channel and the YouTube channel that all of the streams, like, recordings end up there for posterity. So people can look back and say, ah, these are the adventures. Waha. And if uh, you prefer to watch me live, I stream on both the Neon Icy Games YouTube channel and the t Neon Icy Wings Twitch channel. And then, of course, I have various other social medias that I post art to, like Twitter, Tumblr, uh, Newgrounds, DeviantArt, various places. There are far too many. And you can find those various minis that are too many in my link tree, which should be linktr.ee slash neonicywings. And that link can be found in, like, the various link places and about bios, usually. Unless I missed it, but meh. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I will hopefully see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.